To be uh, quite honest with you, I do have an outline here, and I can preach it. And uh, it's out of Proverbs, and uh, uh, it's good, uh, it's helpful, it's, uh, it, it, it don't, goes hand in hand, I think, with uh, the last several weeks of Sunday nights, determining what is valuable. It's um, basing our life on principles, if we'll live by principles. I, I mentioned last week that I, I have a little book, I think I confiscated it from my dad, it's called the little book, or not the little book, but the book of courage. It just so happens to be a little book. And it has uh, quotes about courage and standing up for what's right and doing the right thing. Um, and, and I try to base my life and live my life. As, really, I, I let principle decide. You know, Jake's not in charge. The, the principles are. Uh, Jake's not in charge. The schedule is. Uh, Jake's not in charge. The Word of God is. So I try to have, uh, build my life upon, um, not just principles, but biblical principles. You know how many times I've had conversations with people uh, to where they say, yeah, this is, a, you know, this is something that I believe in. This is a, a principle that I have or a belief that I have. And I kind of chuckle and I go, man, that's, I, don't, I don't know if you're a saved person or not, but that's a Bible principle. Like, I don't know if you know that, but that's biblical. People go around and say, um, uh, even if it's not something they live by, they say, what goes around comes around. Or, or karma. I'm sorry, but... Uh, nobody else came up with that besides the Lord, and it's called you reap what you sow. It's called you reap what you sow. It's, it's, he set that into motion. So I have this message tonight on principles. Um, but um, I kind of I felt like being impromptu and um, just kind of doing something a little different tonight. I don't have an outline from what I'm about to do, but just more of a gut feeling. What I want you to do is I want you to open up to 2 Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. Now, I could read the whole chapter. I'm not going to. <laughs> I won't do that. Uh, just because um, if you are like me and you're reading, um, let's say, a, a good clip of Scripture you might get hung up on something where you go, oh, what is that right there? Oh, that caught my attention. So I always try to keep, uh, I, I personally try to keep it less than 10 verses um, always, and I usually even less than that. I'm usually within the, uh, the five or less range for my text. Uh, but tonight I want you to hear what Peter uh, is, is uh, writing here. And uh, Second Peter chapter 3, he begins and he says, this second epistle... Beloved, I now write unto you, and I want you just to hang on. I'm going to read about, about nine verses. So he says, This I write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. By the way, here I am. We're getting caught on something. That right there is a call to where you say, Man, we, the pastor just preached on faith a couple months ago, or he just did a series on that, and he's doing it again. Yes, bringing it up into remembrance. So verse 2. That ye, uh, excuse me, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before of the holy prophets and of the commandments of the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, scorners, so to speak, scoffers, walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of, cre of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved until fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you'd help me tonight, uh, help us tonight. Uh, to look for your coming. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse number 10 says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, 
in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also in the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now, uh, have, you, have you noticed um, the headlines lately? <laughs> it's madness, isn't it? It's, it's just absolute chaos. It's almost like... Uh, uh, Brother Alex, I'll try to move slow so the camera moves with me. Okay. Uh, it's almost as if we're in a, it's a different world. Like, th- this is fake. All this is fake. This is a dream. This isn't real. Um, this can't possibly be the headline. And it has men masquerading as women, women masquerading as men, Men identifying as six-year-old girls. White women identifying as black women. Uh, uh, You name it. It's happening. Right now, there's a slogan going on in the world that says, uh, especially in America, love is love. Love is love. But the thing is, is it doesn't stop with, with, and what I know what they mean. They mean... Um, a man loving a man is love and a woman loving a woman is love. But the thing is, is it doesn't stop there. It won't stop there. It's a, you you mean that 42 year old man who's in love with that 10 year old girl or that 10 year old boy? That love, if love is love, love is love, right? See, where do we draw the line? Who draws the line? God drew the line. God has drawn the line. The lines aren't being drawn. They're being blurred. They're being blurred. We're living in a time now where not only is there uh, genetic and biological confusion, math is no longer math. Um, uh, It's everyone else's fault, not your fault. We're all victims. Uh, We are all victims. We're victims of sin. That's what we're victims of. Um, But not only that, now we're talking UFOs. We're talking unidentified flying objects, and we all know what the headlines mean, aliens. It's what we're talking. We're talking. <laughs> we're talking about aliens from different planets invading the world. Um, they are. You say, wait, you mean like E.T. phone home alien, like Star Trek alien? No, no. But I do believe they are aliens from a different world. They were once called angels in a place called heaven, and they went to war with Almighty God and got kicked out. They're demons. You're like, oh, listen, the only way to rationalize it and make sense of it, I quickly dismiss it. I see this, oh, look what I saw in the air today. Yeah, you captured such a really clear image on your super-duper special camera there. You know, and it's, come on. I look at it, okay, it's one of two things. It's, it's Photoshop and completely fake, or it's real. So, but folks, we're talking about, the Bible says, the prince of the power of the air. The prince of the power of the air. A great delusion and a great deceiving among the nations. Not only are we talking biologic, biological dysphoria, I don't know what I am. It's very, very simple. But we're not going to go there like that old pastor would do. Uh, I, I'm much more couth. Um, uh, <laughs> he was cool, I'm couth. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's, it's, I don't know what I am. You know why that individual, and listen, let's play, oh, I don't even want to use devil's advocate. Hang that guy. Let's, let's play their side of it. Let's put ourselves in their shoes for a second. Maybe they really don't, maybe they don't know what they are. Who made them that way? They got that way because the lines have been blurred. See, everybody wants to say, that's not very progressive of you. Or you guys need to get with the times. Please tell me where that, where that became like you have to be with the times and you always have to be progressive. I like old school. I like old school. I like being old school. I don't, I don't want to learn how the teenagers are talking. 
because then, then they are my superiors in language. I don't think so. You know, uh, generation, uh, uh, the boomer generation had a way of talking. Generation X had a way of talking. Gener- the millennials had a way. Everybody had their own slang, their own lingo, their own talk, their own. Ab- and, uh, and it always just evolves. As soon, we'll just be grunting at each other. Uh, uh. Like a bunch of, cave- we'll go back to what was, caveman, eh, man? Uh, uh, Adam, whoa, man. Um, no, no, no. So um, not only do we have uh, uh, biological issues going on with folks, and not only do we have UFOs or, or the, the signs of them, the prince of the power of the air. By the way, that's why I think you ought to pay attention to what's coming on television, power airwaves. By, you ought to t- pay attention to what's coming over your radio station, airwaves. You say, Brother Jake, you sound like a conspiracy. The prince of the power of the air. If I'm going to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and it came out of that word, that I better believe everything else that's in that book too. If I'm going to believe it enough for salvation, I ought to believe it enough for everything else. Good for doctrine, for reproof, for goodness, for correction. It's good for all of those things. So, you know what? I like being down here. I'm going to come back down here. Uh, not, so not only do we have all those things, the airwaves, the, 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 the devil's a liar, we also have, the Bible talks about wars and rumors of wars. Wars and rumors of wars. World War III is getting thrown around like it's candy right now. World War III, World War III, World War III. Germany's starting to step in to help Ukraine, to block off Russia. And by the way, if you don't know end time prophecy, Germany's got a, a part to play. Russia, Gog and Magog, has a part to play. The Middle East has a giant part to play. I don't know what part America plays. I don't know if we are obliterated or if... Um, Something insanely tragic happens. I'll get to that in a second. And we are, we are consumed. We are brought on by and kind of taken under the wings of other countries. Maybe we're divided up. Who knows? By the way, I think that uh, uh, catastrophic tragedy that will happen will be the rapture. That's what I believe. Now, I had somebody call me the other day and say, um, this is what I was, you know, what if it is mid-trip? No, he said post trib. I said it can't be post. I said it can't be post trib. It cannot be post tribulation. You read your Bible, dude. You're too old to be knowing what po- post trib rapture. I said I will give you mid trib rapture just to just to come your way a little bit and 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 talk to you. I said, but even if it is mid trib, so what? Whatever. I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. And I don't mean that flippantly. I don't mean that like I don't care about anybody else. I mean, if it is mid-trib, then it's mid-trib. And man, we all read the tea leaves wrong, didn't we? We all kind of got confused on things, didn't we? But I believe the Bible teaches a pre-tribulation rapture for several reasons. Um, and, And I'm not jumping into that rabbit hole tonight. What I wanted to get to tonight was my main point tonight was, man, with, with all the, the world has gone mad. It has gone mad. I don't fit in here anymore. <laughs> There's a, I don't fit in with a lot of the things that are going, neither do you. Um, but I, I, I was thinking, the rapture could happen any time. Man, it could happen really, really soon. And as I was driving down the road, I was with Lucas. Lucas went with me to help chain down a, a, what, the load that I'm taking to Mobile tomorrow. Um, I'll stop in Birmingham for the night probably and then get the rest of the way to Mobile on Tuesday. But uh, he was helping me. And, and as we were driving back, you know, there's a little bit of silence. And I was thinking, just as real as this is, the reality that we live in right now in the twinkling of an eye, our reality is going to be transformed. <laughs> it, right now it could happen and I could see Jesus face to face. We could see God in his place in heaven in the twinkling of an eye. So here we are. 
bogged down with health and with wealth and with jobs and with burdens and with cares and with child rearing and, and uh, parents in nursing homes and, and the state of the country and where we're headed and what's going on, full stop. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For you're already dead and your life is hid in Christ Jesus. You're all, hey, folks, it's already, that's it. I told a fellow yesterday, 60 some years old, um, uh, 70 some years old, Dave Simons, told him, I said, I said, Dave, this is just a shell. And we're standing right next to the graveyard. I said, you're gonna end up in there. I'm gonna end up in there. But you've got something inside of you that's gonna live on forever. But what, how cool, let's just think about it for a second. We could be the generation that gets to go in the rapture. Living today, us living today, if the Lord tarries and none of us die and he comes back in a week or two and we're all still living, we could be the generation that goes in the rapture. We don't have to face death. We didn't have to go through that, that chasm of death. We didn't have to cross that river. He came and took us up out of here. Right, yeah, right. Amen, I like that. And, uh, and I like to think, I like to think, man, Jesus could come back today and my, everything that I'm doing now, gone. Now think about it just for a moment. We get rescued up out of here. The world goes into chaos. I'm talking absolute chaos. You ought to see, you've all been out on the interstates before. Tens of thousands of vehicles. Every interstate, every road in America is going to be closed down because of accidents. People aren't going to be able to get to them because ambulance drivers who are in accidents, ambulance drivers or paramedics, EMS, fire department, National Guard, the police, the, uh, the U.S. military, people who are born again, number one, are taken out. Let's call that a third. Then there's a third who die in all of these accidents. That leaves a third to do all the rescuing. Take a third of the, of the paramedics, paramedics in America, take them to heaven. Take a third of paramedics in America and kill them. And take another third of paramedics and say, okay, now the, 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 a worldwide, you thought COVID was something, a worldwide tragedy all at the same time, and it's on your shoulders. Folks, I, I hate, and I don't mean to, I don't mean to be overly morbid or anything, but there will be cars of people in bodies for days and weeks that they won't even get to. They won't be able to get to him. The world will need a savior. And still at that time, the Antichrist isn't coming to, come to power for another three and a half years as Antichrist. For, th for not a th another three and a half years, he'll be a, a worldwide savior, so to speak. He'll, hey, he'll unite the world. Everybody's going to rally behind him. And then at the three and a half year mark, somebody's going to assassinate that dude and he's going to rise back up and say, oh, I, by the way, I am God. And then he'll do the abomination, the desecration abomination in the temple, and then Jesus Christ is coming back to kick his rear end. But I want you to understand, when you read in the Bible, end times or last days, it doesn't always mean our last days. You see, because there were the last days of Jesus Christ on earth, there were the last days, there are the last days that Jesus dwelled with them, after you know the 40 days, there are the last days of our time, and then there, there are the last days to end all days. You say, Well, what are those? That is when God wipes when the millennial reign of Jesus Christ is done, thousand year reign. Because remember, God is not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. When Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne in the New Jerusalem, or I should say in Jerusalem, I, we're still people are still going to be getting saved. They're going to be looking and we're going to say, that's the savior of the world. He died, he rose again, he's back like he said he would be. Here it is in his book. Here it is right here. People will still reject it because the devil will be loosed for a season to deceive the nations again and, and to war against him one more time. But in those last days, when the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ is coming to an end, those are last days also. The last days when time stops, when there is no more time. And we sing, um, when we've been there 10,000 years, 10 million years, 10 billion years, when there is no more time, when Jesus says, okay, that's it, 
up from this Jerusalem and God destroys the earth and he, re- he makes a new heaven and a new earth. A new, he- a new heaven where the devil cannot turn on him. You see, everybody's going to heaven. I, I, I wonder, you know, I've been to the Alamo before. Um, they say this, I, from what I thought, and from what I understand, there are still preserved blood stains on the walls within the, the confines of the Alamo. Um, what's it show? It's showing its battle scars. I, and I always thought, and I'm, I don't know if I have any biblical basis for this, but if there was war in heaven, there was war in heaven, I wonder if the current heaven bears any battle scars from the war. But God is going to make a new heaven where there, the devil did not walk, where there is no thought, there is no remnant of the devil. This is not the heaven where Lucifer used to be. This is a new heaven, and this is a new earth, free from any remembrance of any type of sin. And I just thought the last couple of days during this week, I was just thinking how cool it's going to be that I'm driving down the road on my way to Mobile, Alabama, and the trumpet sounds, and I'm gone. You're at work, Brother Arif or Brother Bill or Miss Carrie. You're at work, and then the trumpet sounds, and you're out of there. You're out of there. Brother Kevin, you're retired, so you're fishing lines in the water. And, you're, uh, uh, and, and as soon as you get raptured, a fish latches on, that one you've been hunting the whole time. Uh, uh, you're at work. You're, do, you're at school. You're doing whatever you're doing. You're telling somebody about Jesus. Maybe you're talking to a lost person about the rapture. Maybe you're trying to convince that family member that the rapture is real, Jesus Christ is coming back again, and at any moment, boom, we're in the presence of Jesus. I think, it's in, I think it's vitally important, incredibly important, that we keep our eyes on the prize. We keep, and I have safety in my outline. I can pull out my outline and start preaching and teaching that and point one and point two and point three. But I like to stir up your remembrance that the trumpet's going to sound, and the Bible says, as a thief in the night. He's coming like a thief in the night. And we're out of here. We're gone up out of here. Now, I, um, if I can find it very quickly, um, there was something I read a few times. My dad said, hey, when you come across some scripture that, you know, read it 10 times. Read it over and over and over and over again, and things will just begin to um, unfold at you. It's been a joy to be able to do this. It was uh, 1 Thessalonians, I believe it was, if I can get to it, or my eyes will let me. Uh, Thessalonians, where are you? There you are. Uh, 1 Thessalonians. No, 2 Thessalonians. Here it is. Uh, okay, I was wrong. <laughs> if I can't find it, I'll just move on very quickly and, and, and uh, we'll get with what I was talking about. But, um, uh, the Lord is coming back. Jesus is coming back to get us, and I don't want to be caught sleeping. I don't want to be caught unaware. I don't want to be caught uh, with, my, with my head. Well, I want my heads in the clouds. I just want it to be in his clouds. I want my eyes to be on the prize. Now, um, he talks about us not being ignorant to the fact uh, that uh, Jesus is coming back. He says, here we go. Here it is. First Thessalon- or First Thessalonians 5. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So you know that as well as I do. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Um, I, the, a fellow that talked to me on the phone not long ago, he said, I wonder, and, and I told him, I said, brother, the Bible says foolish and unlearned questions avoid. They only render um, uh, unanswerable questions. And he said to me, I wonder if these UFOs that are here, if, if maybe there's like a, de- a, de- a demonic pseudo-rapture. 
And I said, dude, you can't find that any, don't stop it, stop. And he said, no, 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 just, just listen to me. And I said, all right, go ahead. And he said, I wonder if like Christians, born again Christians will be deceived from these vanishings. These, you, folks, because you gotta remember the devil is a copycat guy. He's a forger. And he said, a lot of Christians, Brother Paul, I was just probably sitting there like, what? <laughs> this guy, he said, what if the devil has got like a fake rapture set up that will deceive Christians? And we've always thought, you know, we're a pre-trib. And I said, stop, look. And that's why I stopped him. And we're not going any further with that. I said, number one, because it sounds like some sort of blasphemy, heresy, you know. I was like, but I'm saved, brother. I'm born again, and Jesus Christ is coming back. And, he, and, and it's, what he's saying right here, what Paul is saying right here, is it's not supposed to be a surprise to you. You're not supposed to be living your life, and then all of a sudden, boop, you're gone, and you go, oh. Leaving earth isn't supposed to be a disappointment for raptured people. I am glad to say, I am happy to say, and, and, I, and I, I hope I always stay this way, that I be, and it's not because I don't have a bunch of cool earthly possessions. It's that I think I have it. I have my mind right about earthly possessions. There's not a thing on earth that would keep me here if I knew the rapture was coming. There's not one thing that I would regret leaving here. Well, you had that mansion. Ah, so what? The rapture's here. Well, you had that car collection. So what? The rapture was here. Well, you were just building that business. So good. Thank goodness. No more paperwork, no more headaches, no more managing employees, no more printing out schedules, no more, no, no more of that. No more of it. There's not one thing that would keep me here on earth if I knew the rapture was coming tomorrow. I wouldn't be like, Lord, could you come back on Tuesday or Thursday? No, there's not one thing. There's not one thing that I'm interested in here. My family is saved. My friends are saved. I've been surrounded by born-again Christians, so I know all my friends and my family are going, excuse me, according to their testimony, and I'm a soul winner, so I know that people that I've led to the Lord over my life, they're going also. I'm going to see my grandparents who went on before me. Some of them I've never met before. Others I'd never, I didn't get to see for years. I'm going to see my aunts and uncles. I'm going to see my friends. I'm going to see my ancestors whom I've never met but we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses and I look forward more to that. I look forward more to the shack that I'd have in glory than a mansion that I'd have here on earth because I'm free, I'm free indeed from even the presence of sin. I'm tired of being a sinner. I'm tired of failing. I'm tired of falling. I'm tired of, 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 of getting, I'm tired of getting back up. I wanna go to the place where I never fall again. I'm ready for that and I'm not ready to die but I'm ready for the rapture. I'm not ready to, to, I'm not like, oh, I need to end it all. No, I'm looking for, I, I want it to all end when he's ready to end it all. Now, it says, um, you know that it's not supposed to be a surprise to you. You know that you're not supposed to be surprised at him coming as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety and sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with a child and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. You see, the closest a Christian can get to darkness is going to sleep spiritually. Because I'm a light. You know, flashlights are made to give light. They're made to give light. Um, uh, lamps and street lights and things, what are they made for? They're made to give light. Paul is saying here, don't ever go out. Don't go to sleep, Christian. Don't go to sleep spiritually. Keep your mind awake. Keep your mind awake. Keep your heart awake. Keep your mind on the Lord. You are the children of light. Um, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. He's saying, pay attention. Pay attention. Oh, uh, what was that word? Um, circumspectly. Circumspectly. It means to walk thoroughly. Thoroughly. Completely. Thoroughly. And that's what he's saying here. Um, uh, for they that sleep, uh, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Let us not, let's not be a part of that crowd. But let us 
who are of the day, and by the way, Jesus is the day, he's the day star, we are of Jesus, therefore we are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Now I will say this, here we go, here I'm gonna come to the mid-trib aisle for a second. Are we so special that we get to escape wrath? Hey, our ancestors, our brothers and sisters in Christ, their blood was shed for this book, for our church, for the name of Jesus Christ. Are we so special that we get to to escape wrath? Oh, he's not talking about the wrath of man. He's talking about the wrath of God. We're not talking about dungeon and sword. We're talking, for God hath not appointed us to his wrath. His wrath. Now, Uh, God has not appointed us to wrath, but obtained salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we be, uh, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even also uh, ye, uh, uh, even as also ye do. Now, just, just, I want you to go out this week. And, and I don't know, maybe it's me. Maybe it's my personality type and my traits, and maybe you're a little different. Maybe you dwell on something else spiritual. But the apex, the apex of this generation, the, the Laodicean age, and by the way, um, uh, when you read that in Revelation, he, John is writing to a seven real churches. But there's also a, a spiritual outlook that you can get to it. And they say, We're, we live in dispensations. Now, Brother Hiles, you did not hear that. Brother Hiles hated the dispensationalism. Uh, he, he dispensations, yes, because that just means a time frame. Dispensation, dispensationalist means we are bona fide live in a certain time, and this is the way God works in this time. When the Bible clearly states that there's no changing with God, God does not change. The way He worked then is the way He works now. Um, uh, But regardless, um, uh, the dispensation of the Laodicean age. We live in a church age. And by the way, I think this is so appropriate. Laodicea means the people's rights. The people's rights. And don't we live in a time of my rights, women's rights, black rights, equal rights, man's rights, unborn babies' rights, human rights. We live in a time of my rights, the people's rights. You know, the right of the people, the right of a born-again child of God is to serve God with his whole life. That's your right. You are not your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your members. So though you may dwell on something spiritual, I like to dwell on the apex of like the holiday of Christianity. Like you look forward to Christmas, I now look forward, like I'm looking forward to the rapture. The rapture's going to happen soon. I don't know when. You say, yeah, but that's what Brother Howes used to say. That's what Brother Malone used to say. That's what Brother Lester Roloff used to say and Curtis Hudson used to say. That's what all these guys said, that Jesus is coming. That's what Paul used to say. Jesus is coming back soon. It's the day of the Lord. The time is near. <laughs> We've been at the time is near for 2,000 years. But we're 2,000 years nearer. We're 2,000 years nearer. Brother Hiles said it in, you know, 1980. All right, well, well, then what are we? We're 43 years closer? We're closer now than we've ever been. So I'll leave you with this. Set your affection. Affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Folks, the best prioritizing that we can do is to get our spiritual life in order to meet the Lord, to see him face to face. He's coming back. Are we ready to meet him? Yes, Brother Jackson, I'm saved. I didn't ask you if you were saved. I asked if you were ready to meet him. Me, I, I took that as a foregone conclusion. Are you ready to meet him? Would you bow your head and close your eyes? I want to pray and pray for all of us. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for the promises in your book. 
I thank you that you gave us the promise that you're coming back one day. Now, Lord, I, I don't mean to be selfish. I, and, and I know that I could die just like billions before me have died. And I could close my eyes in death and wake up in heaven. Lord, I understand that's a very real possibility. Uh, and it and, and doesn't mean I should uh, be so heavenly minded that I'm of no earthly good. Uh, I want to be of use to you down here. But Lord, I really look forward to it. I, 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 I always hoped to go in the rapture. I would always would love to be able to experience that and say, man, I was able to go in the rapture. Um, but I know what that means when the rapture happens. It means some pretty bad things happening down here on earth. And if we as humans, as mankind, would be willing to save a young child out of traffic from getting hit by a car or do what we could to rescue someone out of danger with every physical possible, with all the physical possibilities that we could possibly muster to help rescue somebody or save people. Lord, knowing what we know about the end times, there's no greater thing to be today than a soul winner. There's no greater thing to be than somebody who tells people the gospel. Lord, I'd ask that you would set a fire in each of our hearts that everyone would reach one, that everyone would reach one and then teach others also. Oh, Heavenly Father, we look forward to your coming back and each of us uh, anticipate that. I don't know if there's anybody in this room who says, no, Lord, don't come back yet because, you know, I need to go on this vacation or I need to go do this first. That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, but Heavenly Father, we, like I said, we anticipate it. We look forward to it. But Lord, we want to be a prepared people, a people who are ready to meet you, a people who've said, I have my house in order. I've read my Bible. I have prayed. I've been faithful to church. I've been obedient to that book. I've taught my kids. I'm ready to see Jesus. I'm ready to stand before the Lord, not with perfect confidence, but being able to say, no, I lived purely. You know, once I got a grip, I lived purely. I confessed my sins. I was a prayer warrior. I was a Bible carrier. I, 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 I witnessed to others. Heavenly Father, help us. As Thessalonians said, we're the light. Help us to be that light, shining in a dark world. Lord, they don't like us. They don't like the message. Heavenly Father, that doesn't help it not to deter us. Give us a good night tonight. Give us safety as we go about our week, Lord, and keep us and help us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. <laughs>